grace and peace to you from our Lord Jesus Christ. I am Pastor Christine Stockson, pastor at Holy Trinity Lutheran Church in Chandler, Arizona, and I'm glad you've joined us this evening for a devotion. Let us pray. O oh Lord God, tireless guardian of your people, you are always ready to hear our cries. Teach us to rely day and night on your care. Inspire us to seek your enduring justice for all this suffering world. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Our parable tonight is about the persistent widow from Luke chapter 18. Then Jesus told them a parable about their need to pray always and not to lose heart. He said, in a certain city there was a judge who neither feared God nor had respect for people. In that city, there was a widow who kept coming to him and saying, grant me justice against my opponent. For a while he refused, but later he said to himself, though I have no fear of God and no respect for anyone, yet because this widow keeps bothering me, I will grant her justice so that she may not wear me out by continually coming. And the Lord said, listen to what the unjust judge says. And will not God grant justice to his chosen ones who cry to him day and night? Will he delay long in helping them? I tell you, he will quickly grant justice to them. And yet, when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on earth? The Gospel of the Lord. We are over 40 days in Arizona into the shelter-in-place order, order from Governor Ducey. And for some of the, us, this is just a major inconvenience. We are working from home. We are avoiding eating out. We have had to cancel trips. We have to connect with friends, not in person, but over Zoom or FaceTime or Google Hangouts. And that is really hard. And I don't want to dismiss the loneliness that goes with that and the grief that accompanies all of this. But there are others that this is affecting more directly and has more inconvenience to it. At Holy Trinity, we've had to postpone four funerals for people who need to grieve, who need to find some sort of closure, who need to gather and share memories. And for others, they are experiencing significant financial stress. I spent three hours on Tuesday morning calling with my son, trying to get through the phone system to the unemployment office in Wisconsin with literally over a thousand tries, and we were unsuccessful. As he tries to follow up with his unemployment claim from being laid off due to COVID-19, which is maybe why this persistent widow parable hits home for me today, trying to work to find justice in what seems to be a difficult system for those who are trying to make a way in the world. We have had small businesses which have tried to apply for PPP, that Paycheck Protection Program, and there is not enough money for everyone. And we find large companies are coming after that money that was meant for small businesses. So what do we make of this persistent widow who continues to go to the judge pleading for justice, pleading for help and mercy from someone who is unjust? Is this the way we see God, an unjust judge, and we hope that we can just wear God down? But what if God in the parable is the widow? And what if maybe we as society are the unjust judge? And maybe we are hoping that if God keeps calling on us, God will wear us down in order that justice might be done for God's people. You see, we live in a world where the richer seem to get richer and the poor are poorer, and those most affected by the shutdown are the poor and the day laborers and the restaurant workers. They're not just affected financially, but they are the ones who are most susceptible to the virus as they work in our grocery stores and prepare food in the restaurants as they continue to work in the service industry. While those who work in more white-collar businesses are mostly inconvenienced by just having to work from home and Zooming into meetings, maybe the persistent widow is God pleading to us to make the world more just to take care of those who are suffering the most, helping us to hear the cries of God's people. The phrase that we translate in this parable, this woman who keeps bothering me, is more literally translated as 
this woman who has blackened my eye. That is by pleading to the judge over and over again for justice and by refusing to settle for anything less but an equitable resolution, the widow has shamed him and in the sense has given the judge a black eye. And so I hear this is about God crying to us for justice for God's people. In fact, maybe Jesus, especially in Luke's gospel, is inviting us to imagine that that's what prayer is about too. Not simply just asking for personal needs to be met. Not only holding up those we love and who are in need, but also that prayer is about asking for justice, about crying to those in authority until all are treated equitably. And maybe not only through prayer, but persistently working for justice and for all those who suffer injustices. And while we certainly can plead for injustices in the world, in regard to COVID-19, there are systematic problems that have been around since long before this pandemic. They've just been highlighted and increased. So my question is, do we pray unceasingly against these injustices? Do we hear God's cry to us? And baptism, it says, is part of our baptismal vows that we are called to work for justice in all the earth. Which brings me to the end of this Jesus' parable. As it turns out, Jesus isn't comparing God to the unjust judge. If an unjust judge can be shamed into giving justice, Jesus is saying, then how much more will the God of righteousness bring justice to all of God's children? Yes, we are called to pray unceasingly, be persistent in our prayers, and our prayers drive us to action, serving our neighbor, loving our neighbor, calling for justice for our neighbors, and ultimately hearing God's call to us persistently and unceasingly to advocate for those who are being held down. Amen. Please join me in prayer, knowing the one in whom we trust and with the help of the Holy Spirit living in us. Let us offer our prayers for the church, the world, and all those in need. Faithful partner, you will not leave us without a blessing. Wrestle with your church and renew it for the sake of the world. Preserve our life in you so that we faithfully name you before the world. Mercifully extend your ancient promises to all people. Keep and defend the nations from all evil and be their shade and protection. Protect your most vulnerable people those who work in public spaces and are susceptible to the virus, those who are un or underemployed, those who have difficulty paying their bills, hold them in your steadfast love. Guide the human family in ways of mercy and justice. Our help comes from you, maker of heaven and earth. Hear the cries of those who suffer in mind, body, or spirit those who are sick or are suffering from loneliness, those who are grieving and all those we name before you now, either silently or aloud. Help us to not lose heart so that your healing love prevails in our lives. Speak through us and in our encounters with the Holy Spirit. Hearten and strengthen ministers of faith formation so that all who belong to you may be capable and equipped for good works in your name. Help us to use items of technology in order that we may make your love known. And trusting and delighting in you, we commend all our lives into your loving hands. We offer these prayers in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Let us say the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Now may Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit bless you now and forever. Amen. Amen.